गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी नमस्कार सो वेलकम ऑल वंस अगेन मैक्स नैन एडवाइजरी प्राइवेट लिमिटेड हैज कम बैक विथ अनादर वन मोर डायनामिक पर्सनैलिटी स्पोर्ट्स पर्सनैलिटी इयर मैक्स नैन एडवाइजरी प्राइवेट लिमिटेड मैक्स नैन स्पोर्ट्स गुरुकुल अनसीन स्पोर्ट्स पर्सनैलिटीज ऐसी अंडर अपन जी सीरीज एफबी लाइफ ची सीरीज करतो है त्या सीरीज मधे वी दिस इज द फिफ्टी सेकेंड एपिसोड दैट शाव वी आर कंप्लीटिंग वन इयर सो फिफ्टी टू वीक्स कंसिस्टंटली वी हैव बीन डिलिवरिंग दीज से दीज लाइव सीरीज ऑन फेसबुक एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक ऑल दी वेरियस नैशनल इंटरनैशनल पर्सनैलिटीज हू हैव supported us and been on this particular uh, platform also i would like to thank all our viewers and uh, you've been a wonderful audience and a great support for maxnan so today maxnan advisory private limited let me create the mission of maxnan advisory private limited once again so our mission is to develop sportsmanship mindset amongst youth and to create healthy wealthy globe and the vision of our organization is to create awareness amongst 1 million families about the various career opportunities in the field of sports by the year 2030 similarly we want to create sportsmanship mindset amongst 10000 cricketers by the year 2030 and work as a sports mentor for indian olympics team by the year 2028 so this is the vision and mission of maxnan advisory private limited and today i am very honored that we have a wonderful personality here who is a doctor by profession as well as firstly i think as a doctor more than a doctor she considers herself a sports personality and uh, sailing has been her passion so an international sailor we would want to listen to her about her sailing experiences so let me welcome shweta shervegar today on this platform welcome dr shweta and uh, we would first like to understand from you that how did you get inclined towards the sailing as a passion so i understand you started off very early uh, at a very young age of 10 years so i would like to uh, request you on behalf of maxnan that please share your uh, thought on this thank you very much over to you shweta uh hi everyone uh so it's nice to be here on this platform so basically uh i started as ma'am said that i started my career at the age of 10 sailing is very rare sports in india and i feel privileged or lucky to be a part of this uh i started my sailing from a institution on a sea cadet it's a non comedy organization and saturday was a curricular activity for sailing and that's how i picked it up my sports and i liked it and because it's not easy for a 10 years old child to learn this uh, sea game i mean but it was very scary initially but yeah so did anybody inspire you to get into sailing or you you decided it on your own so at the age of tender age of 10 years what made you uh, bring uh, to the, come to this uh, sport हेलो
Hello? Yes, Shweta. <coughs> Do you, am I audible? Yeah, I guess uh, there was a lag. Yeah, so just wanted to understand what made you come to this sport at the tender age of 10 years. So was it an influence or was it your choice? What was it exactly? No, it was my choice because as I just entered the sea, slowly, slowly I started liking it. Well, it's a different sports. Like it is a lot of challenge, self confidence, and it's not easy to be out alone in the sea. So that's how I started liking that sports and thought to have my career of passion into it. Yeah, wonderful. That's great. So, how did you begin? So when when it came to uh, sailing. What was the first thing? So, uh, what what are the processes or what is the procedure that you followed? So, how did you go? Where did you get into? Which uh, uh, club did you join first? Or how was it? So, what was the process that you followed? Basically, in uh, Mumbai, there are very few sailing clubs. As I told you, I started from the Sea Cadets and there are many clubs around Mumbai, but uh, especially in South Bombay. Um, I started with the first uh, young boat that is an optimist class. It is for the age of, I mean, if you want to start at eight also, eight to uh, 15 years. You can sail only till 15 years. It's a youth class basically. And then you move on to the different categories. <laughs> so I started with the optimist class and then sailed 420, 470. It's a different categories of the boat. Okay. And this is my, I think, 19 to 20 years of sailing of experience. So I really feel nice and share my knowledge with the young generation. And I feel that more uh, people know about the sports and it's lovely to start as a, I mean, just to learn and then it's your choice if you want to continue the sports or not. Wonderful. So... Uh, you are also a homeopathic doctor and a, a practitioner. So, yes. uh, while you were, uh, so sailing has always been a passion for you, Shweta. And uh, while doing that, how did you balance your uh, academics as well as the passion? I wanted to, like, as my doctor is, my brother is a doctor. So I always, I also wanted to be a doctor, but uh, initial days while well, giving the CET and all, it was a bit difficult. So of course I wasn't that complete scholar girl. I mean, normal, like middle, it's an average uh, to good student, not a very, very high performance, uh, studious uh, student. Yeah. But uh, of course, because why? Because completely I was sailing. Sailing is not like you can sail for two hours and done. You have to give your Absolutely. morning fitness and then like at least four to five hours of water and then debriefing by coach and until the time you reach home, it's almost uh, you spend about nine to ten hours in that sports or more also sometimes. But yes, I wanted to always be a doctor and yeah, I, I got into it and it was a, it's a great journey. I mean, a lot of ups and downs were there because of my championships and all. But I wanted to complete it. I had that, like hard work is always key to success. So I just push myself into getting, you know, like I can do both basically. It's not that few parents always say that, no, no, you to be a doctor, an engineer. So it's not like that. If you like, you have to do something, you can do it. It's See, destiny is there, but if you push something towards your destiny, it will happen. So Very you true. need to you need to do simultaneously both the stuff. So whatever I mean, sports ke saath ek, uh, educational career is also important, so that uh, sports is not going to be your lifelong. And even if it's your lifelong, you can be a coach, and there are many other uh, fields of uh, into sports. But everything education is must needed. So I think. It's, uh, every child should pursue <laughs> education plus sports. So, uh, Shweta, uh, what what age did you actually start your uh, competitive sailing? I think uh, 
16 i think okay so from the age of 10 years to 16 years and that was also competitive sailing but like an olympic class or right. you know you guys okay from the age of 16 so now that you spoke about the olympic aspect uh, we would like to understand one more aspect uh, one more thing here is that uh, what is that difference from 10 years to 16 years so you were still doing that sailing competition competitive sailings and then on the 16th year you said it is the olympic class so what is the change or what has, what were the transformations that happened over a period of those 6 years so basically uh, we learn about the basics of sailing and it's a youth class in, initially so we learn everything how does it goes and uh, we need to be a like confident or a champion enough to go to an olympic class you can't just suddenly start a sport and be an olympian or dream of absolutely of you can dream of you can dream of being a olympian but uh, there is a step you know you have to la- climb a ladder basically very true. very true so initially we have to grow ourselves basically into the, those things and as the age permits because there are like few things age is not a limit basically in sailing sports also you can say that the age of 8 and you can say that the age of uh, i mean 90s also so there's no oh. age limit in sailing yeah Great. so even if you are good enough to start and even if you are young and if you start your uh, olympic class sailing in a early days no problem i mean but you need so that earlier the better you be would clear. you would suggest earlier the better right yeah yeah definitely so that that's what the the strategies of other countries are you start something at a very early stage and then you know that's what if you start at age of 8 to 10 so in 3 4 years your base and everything is clear and then you move on So, so how did you identify ki he is he or she is interested in sailing and what type of um, qualification or the yeah, interest just, we can say and no qualification so, but whatever interest if somebody is saying no, ki sailing karna hai to what type of interest you need so for the person the person need to be a swimmer bus like just to be on safety ke liye swimming is must so and uh, there should be no fear of water or of you know to so ones that it's okay even slowly slowly even those people who initially they get afraid of water because at the age of 9 or 10 or even some people start it's not that you should start at 8 or 9 but some people start at 16 20 but there are different types of boats it's not so there are some olympic classes boats there are keel boats there are Uh, Volvo Ocean race boats. There are F1 GP sailing. So there are different things. It's not only uh, Olympic boats. There are other boats also. You can start at any age of time. So, so where do you practice this? Because it, this is a very I, costly game. We can say. Yes, yes, definitely. Or you have your own uh, boat or something for sailing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's very costly boat uh, sports. the equipment itself or like my ca- current category or what i am uh, practicing for is cost about 40 45 lakhs so definitely you need to own a boat or you need to rent a boat or if you if the club has a boat and you can get access to the boats then yes you can get it but there are different categories with the different uh, like the small kids optimus boat cost about 5 to 6 lakhs So it's a different uh, type where you want to move yourself, you know. Yeah, but I have gone through all the different stages with all different class of boats and in different categories I have sailed. So it's the step, next step, next step, next. So what I am currently sailing is a high performance class boat. It's very fast. Uh, like it runs sometimes uh, faster than the wind. It's more faster than the wind. The wind speed basically. Oh wow. Yeah. So, so these are all yachts, right? Yeah, the big ones are the yachts, and the small ones are known as dinghies. So it depends, single boat, uh, single boat, person boat, or double 
so depends what category same as what i told before so the odds is uh, it team game or individual game how, how? there are how there are categories with a single ones also and there are categories with a two person also and there are categories with uh, four people also but okay. for okay. olympics uh, it's single and it's doubles up to right. i mean yeah So for and what are the distances that you cover? So basically, it's it depends. Forty uh, minutes of race each race. So every day we have three races. The series consists of twelve to fifteen races, uh, and it's like a you can say we have a targets or an like an F one race. You can oh. you just go yeah. So we have a points to round like a triangle. So like a track within the sea or. There is no track in the sea. You can go anywhere in the sea. <laughs> Absolutely. You just um, there will be points to round it. So you can right. go right. You can go left. There is no stoppage. But whoever goes fast in your own studies of the wind, tide, pressure, and everything, and there's lot of studies. It's not only that. By sailing, आता है बोट चलाना आता है डंट नो इट्स नॉट दैट इट्स लॉट डीपर अंडरस्टैंडिंग आल्सो ऑफ वेदर and other stuffs now so what, what kind of what kind of uh, mind and body coordination does one need to have so one is of course the intellect so with regards to the weather conditions to so the geographical study uh, some kind of an uh, oceanography study uh, is it needed there that comes slowly or gradually you we can't expect a new beginner to know all these things so gradually with your practice automatically you will learn all this it's like every right. day when you sail in the sea with the same spot you know what's a uh, regular pattern happening you know you learn through the process it's not just sudden you will know it okay and how about the fitness so what do you do additionally uh, or an exercise that would uh, put in what is the effort that you put in so at least minimum 45 minutes to 1 hour of regular training is required so that will keep an individual fit whether you are doing a professional sports or no so i think uh, fitness is really important and for us also like uh, depends what which part you want to build up more or what's your weakness or strength so we work on those things like one day cardio one day this so that depends uh, that's what i depends on the category of the board what type or which part of the body you need to focus more on Is it more okay. on endurance? Is it more on strength? Strength we need, endurance we need, but there are specific things that we see. Me, he can't do like upper body or you know, or on the forearms or this. So it depends. You you would need a lot of balance and control. Uh, so one is your body balance and control, and one is you need to balance and control the yacht that you are sailing on. So how yeah. do you actually manage that out? So what is the kind of if uh, uh, the practice that you guys put in? yeah fitness wise balance uh, that is important to know and learn uh, board balance flatter the board faster the board so you okay. can't uh, heel the board and continuously heel the board there are some times the different strategies you need to use so all right yeah so as a team game how you practice together like what type of strategy you require what type of team building you do as a team game uh, first of all you need to act uh, as one in a in a board you can't act like a two person on board like your mind should work together your your whatever if even if my partner don't say i need to understand on the board while the racings are happening or that trust should be there on each other so those are the process uh, it's a part of training you need to learn and have a build that trust between each other and automatically i think that's the biggest key to success in this uh, type of professional sports especially in the team boats a uh, lot of things i mean but i think so how many countries are participating in this how many countries are participating oh, there are like particular. more like Forty, fifty countries are. It's a lot, huge number. Especially in in Asia, we have very few countries yes. who does sailing. But in uh, in world, almost 
more than 60 70 you can say there are a lot of countries having a money and entries and at a time so you so have in india practice, one minute huh? you right. have to practice in c or in a uh, different uh, situation how you practice every day so basically you can uh, you yeah we the main biggest competitions or uh, like olympic sailing or venues are normally in the sea you can practice there are we have in india we have such a good lake sailors also so it's not that only a sailing can be done in the sea huh, you can do it in the lake also yeah. but uh, pro- you need to know like the depth of the sea, depth of the lake and there should be wind basically yeah. the motto is wind we need to learn uh, sailing in light winds also and in heavy very heavy winds also so it's not only ki by if it's 10 knots of breeze then only i can learn or no so you need to learn even if it's a 2 knot of breeze also of course the races are not started in 2 knots of breeze but uh, minimum saleable conditions to survival conditions basically so who decides the weight of the boat in the competitions there is no weight category in such it is i mean only the age for the youth we have in sailing but weight category for at least olympic classes of boats there is nothing like that but but um it depends on the athlete like there are there is, like for the, for my uh, my class of boats the minimum uh, or the ideal weight you can say is about 140 or 136 so it depends on the athlete what strategy you want to use you want to be uh, equal weight like dono ka mila ke helm and the crew matlab two person boats so mm. basically what strategy you want to use you want to be the equal weight so that you will go more faster or you want to put on little heavy weight so that you will be okay to handle the heavy winds so there are different different plannings you need to pursue but most of us we try to keep whatever the equal weight as per the world um, categories you know i mean so, whatever we do all the studies so during the competitions so likewise you said so then uh, what are the criterias that are there so wh- how do you define the technical criterias of these competitions so in these cases specifically what are the various criterias and how do so like for example if there is a boxing then there is a weight that is defined or there is a wrestling then there is a weight category that is defined so in case of your uh, particularly as a sailor uh, one is of course in the olympic championships or the asian games for that matter uh, what is the criteria of the boat or decided or technicalities if you can share basically olympic classes boat we have laser laser radial so we have men's and women's category laser is a single class of boat like one person per boat and with a one single sail on top of it so that's a laser class then we have uh, skiff classes in skiff classes we have 49er 49er fx that was my previous category 49er fx 49er is for the males and 49er fx is for the females Okay. Uh, we yeah. have 470 which was girls and boys separately first but since the upcoming olympics the category is now mixed so one boy and one girl the so same one more a uh, mixed category is an akra class which i am going to i am uh, preparing for the upcoming asian games now so that is also a mixed class so compulsory one boy and one girl is needed uh, now we have kite surfing wind surfing So in that also males and females, it's the surfing. So basically, you have a board and you have a kite on top, and then wind surfing. You have a board and a, a sail which is done by the hand. You know, so those are also part of the sailing. Yeah, so these are the categories of the board, and there is no age as such. You know, you should be at this age for. or a weight but this is what a athlete research about it about uh, the weight categories or where i should be the ideally fit for it right or what the height if i am heighted then i i think this is for laser 
class like the single board you need to be a bit tall build a short build can't survive in heavy breeze and that single handed board so you need to be tall so that you pull the board more harder so those are the categories uh, i mean the club normally or the seniors or the coach helps you to decide what you want to go on to next okay so what is the competitive structure in this junior sub junior then how how about it and how what about the so the youth classes we olympics? don't have jun qualifying round for olympics we have for world championship so basically uh only nine there are some categories now in my category there are 19 to 20 uh, countries only can participate that's all and there is uh, that laser class there are about 40 42 countries can participate that's only the biggest fleet of olympics in laser class but otherwise all rest of the classes like 49er and nakra and uh, rest of the fleets it's about 19 20 entries per category so all the selection trials happens in the world championship so in the top 10 world top 6 there is a criteria laid down uh, every olympic cycle uh, so 10 people 10 say athletes will be selected from the world championship then every continental will have one quota so they will have a continental selections so we as an indian will have an asian qualifiers so we can go for the world qualifiers also and we can go for the asian qualifiers also as an yeah. continental quota so if we don't qualify for uh, world championships then we try to qualify in the asian quota um, that's all i mean that's so it's very very competitive sailing i mean it's and mm. we so indians tough, tough we, competition you can say tough competition yeah yeah definitely at international level yeah yeah a lot like a lot to be at the so top how many states of... are representing in maharashtra like i think uh, those are coastal region they are uh, much more interested in this type of things uh, sailing yes but uh, we don't have much facilities here in um, maharashtra okay. but uh, bhopal um, maharashtra uh, tamil nadu kerala mm-hmm. our okay. countries goa and how many goa people Dubai. actually qualify uh for what is the number yes. of participation and how many out of what is the percentage that gets qualified for such international level competitions it depends on the support and everything it's not easy just to go and qualify it need your support of uh, family friends government money because uh, olympic circuit needs minimum i mean if you decide okay i want to do an olympic circuit it's not easy because in india only you can't practice and train You need to go outside and train with an elite athlete so that you perform yourself well. So at least like like three to four crores are the budget you need to think in your mind. No, you know, to be to be in this Olympic uh, competitive sailing for four years. I mean, at least a one CR per year you can have to consider. Okay. I mean, and that's not easy for a. <laughs> for a normal person to you know so that's what that's why we are lacking somewhere because there is a lack of support especially in our sports because it's a it, lot of things are like especially like everything like equipment se leke coach board se leke um i mean getting a boat also or renting a boat and travel we need to move our boats from one place to another if we have a boat and there are ample like and this listed out so much and it just looks easy but it's not easy no so shweta itne kathinai ke bavajood bhi what is that ki aapko sailing karna hai kya wo thrill hai aapko pasand aata hai aur aapko wahi pursue karna hai and definitely you are doing that but still we would like to know that aisa kya thrill hai just like the thing abhi i have to do i love the sports so that in the future generation can look at the sports and can come forward and get more medals i i mean i am pushing myself that i don't want to give up basically i could have give up any longer time but no i won't give up and i am still because in generally i have got a asian game medal but that's not my target i my next target is going for olympics and you know and finishing somewhere top and then uh, getting a medal so that is the target of upcoming now to qualify for olympics 
and definitely i will push myself and i am doing it and hopefully to get and get a medal for india soon wonderful you have so, started coaching also when i have time yes what has been your best moment of sailing shweta of course asian games okay and what what, what was the experience there if you can share because there it was very hard to go i mean the struggle we have done to reach that platform it wasn't easy because we there were some problems going on just before the asian games and uh, we didn't had a boat to practice so without a boat it was just some mental training and and with all those things to go there with uh, some injuries and all and of course we were looking after the injuries but still so mental training was really needful during that time because no board we can't do anything and have to do the other side which was going around some problems were going around simultaneously so i think that was a happiness when we got proved the india that yes we deserve to go there and we deserve to get a medal i think and that well, happiness as soon as we finished or i think second last day only we knew that we are going to get a medal like before the last uh, day we knew either we were going to get a bronze medal or either we were going to get a silver medal because we we were confirmed great so last day it was just push more harder to get either a gold or a silver because medal to pakka tha it was just to push next level and yes and that really helped us aur medal medal milne ke baad yahan pe kaisa reaction tha indians ka aapke sath uh they came to know about the sports basically exactly because sailing was not that famous sports and then suddenly me and my partner uh, varsha suddenly comes up and you know oh this is the new sports which india has got a medal into it and at the same year we got three medals like we got one medal the boys category got one medal and one more in the single category we got so it was in the history of sailing that we got three medals after so many oh. years so it was really a nice movement for us to be a part of it fantastic very nice so you also have an experience to share about our uh, dear prime minister if you can share that yeah it was great i think uh, when we had i think after we when we had a opportunity to meet him i um, mean just a uh, general talks and all so that time actually when i came back after asian game there was janmashtami so i had gone to uh, iskon temple and they posted my uh, photo with the medal on the social media with the god and the medal and i think narendra modi sir had seen that picture and uh, he oh, uh, he asked who went to the temple and when we went to for a photograph session with him and then i i didn't understood actually what he actually mean to say so second again he asked you know that who went to the iskon temple in mumbai and then i said yes i went and then he like oh very nice keep going on it's good you know to have blessing the doll i like okay great so i was like very amazed and surprised to and was happy to know that you know such a big person Yes. knowing uh, such a small uh, yeah. taking a note of every individual, uh, individual. achievement is something yeah, that is really commendable yes yeah wonderful great so uh, shweta you talked about uh, injuries so what kind of injuries do you expect in this kind of a sport so most common are the muscle injuries like muscle wear and tear of you need to build your muscles in such a way that you are strong enough and mm-hmm. something either you get any injuries or some cuts always in the board so it's not and you can't uh, keep grounding about it like no i got hurt i'm not going to do it then you it's not it's not a sport for you then because uh, this injuries or the muscle injuries like especially the legs or the back you will always have those injuries or the wear and tear of your muscles or over stress muscle like strain on the muscles so i mean you have to develop you have to train you have to take proper physiotherapy for that and a lot of things 
so shweta now what what is the next uh, in line what, which competition or which championship are you planning for or preparing for um preparing for the uh, upcoming asian games i have moved on to the new category it's an akra class so it's a, a mixed class and uh, it's a high performance again faster than what my previous boat was so this is like and it lifts it it's lifts on the foil so it's like above the sea level it goes with the foilers and that's what it makes it more faster and the same i mean that's my category and i'm preparing for upcoming asian games and for the olympics and i am also going for a j it's a keel boat now jt it's a keel boat i'm going for the world championship to usa and there i'm going to train after that i'll be training for my nakra training also like for preparation wow. for the first selection selection trials for asian games super wonderful so we have few audiences uh, watching us live on facebook we have kaustub churi we have uh, mr pankaj gare we had mr dhananjay vaidya so guys thank you so much uh, for being a wonderful audience and being there and always supporting us with our uh, new initiatives and uh, the speakers that we invite here who are really very inspiring and dynamic and they are doing a great job for our country so if you have any questions or if you have any uh, uh, things to comment you can always put it in the comment box uh, on the fb group and uh, yes uh, you can compliment the uh, sports personalities that come up here uh, because they are really doing a very very great job for the country so shweta uh, we really uh, thank you for being with us today on this uh, show and uh, it's been a wonderful uh, journey that we uh, have been seeing uh, through your you know profiles and through the discussions that we had uh, from the last few minutes so it's been really wonderful to know about you uh, so uh, to the youth what is the message that you would want to give about the sports first of all you should pursue one sports in your life because sailing was not only for me i did badminton i was initially the best sports person in my school college and professionally i do sailing and a uh, pistol shooting so it's not uh, it depends you try out many sports whichever sports you like you can pursue that but at least try something and it's always good for being fit and uh, your mind is always active you can be you no know, even if you're stressed out or something this sports will give you a different way of thinking and life and uh, that's what never give up in your life and keep going towards your dream and ek bar thaan liya so do it everything will automatically fall in place and uh, i i just believe that just believe in yourself what the doors will automatically open so that is what i feel and that's what i believe and that's what is happening in my life so i think it's just uh, keep going never give up wonderful great great so uh, once again uh, we wish you all the very all the best. best shweta thank you for your thank all you. future endeavors and may you come up with flying colors and uh, more and more feathers in your hat for the country so all the best to you and uh, thank you for being on uh, the platform of maxnan sports gurukul unseen sports personalities fb series so on behalf of maxnan sports gurukul i thank all the audiences as well who've been watching us live and you've been uh, seeing this video and definitely commenting on it so thank you very much on behalf of maxnan advisory private limited Thank you so much Sweta all the best and God bless Thanks. thank you so much